Hey everybody, with all the crazy stuff going on in the world right now, a lot of businesses in the United States are shutting down and everyone, I, we all hope that's just temporarily. Luckily, there are some exceptions and those exceptions are usually known as essential businesses, stuff like grocery stores, um, medical supplies, all that kind of thing. And bookstores also want to be thought of as essential. And from, from what I've seen so far, a few of the bookstores in my area are open but they're doing stuff like online sales, or they're, they're letting in number, a limited number of customers into the store at a time. And I haven't heard uh, any declaration about whether or not bookstores are considered as essential, but I haven't heard about any mayors or governors threatening to shut them down either. All right, uh, my name's James. I write a blog called Dysfunctional Literacy where I post stuff like book reviews, commentary, and sometimes I post my own original stuff. So check it out if you get the chance. Uh, back to the topic, if I'm given a choice between going into a bookstore or ordering online, I'd probably just go into the bookstore. I'm a, a browser. I mean, I'm a germaphobe too, but my, my browsing instincts are stronger, I, th I think, even with all the stuff that's going on now. I want to go into the bookstore. If I, uh, if I browse, I'll probably buy more stuff. So it's in the bookstore's interest to let me in. And if there's anybody, if there's anybody you should let into a store at a time like now, it's a germaphobe. I'm glad that I still kind of have access to bookstores, but the question still remains. Are bookstores, are they really essential? I mean, I'm biased because I read a lot, but I'll try to act objective when I talk about this. Uh, first of all, we need real books so that we have an alternative to the screens. With so much of our lives right now being conducted online, that's a lot of screen time. That's a lot of time that our eyes are staring at those, com whether it's computer screens or laptop screens or phone screens, it's a lot of screens and that's way too much time for our eyes to be focused on them. We need books just to give our eyes a rest. A lot of my uh, non-blogging work is now being done online and I'm, <laughs> I'm already tired of staring at screens all the time. If I have to stare at a screen to read books, I'll probably just stop reading books or at least cut back a lot. We also need bookstores more than ever because the libraries have shut down. Now, I understand this because libraries aren't always clean. You never know who's touched those grimy old books and you don't know who's been wandering in the library. A lot of people wander the libraries and a lot of those wanderers aren't necessarily sanitary and they're not really interested in books either. So if the bookstore is limiting customers, you don't have to worry about the unsanitary wanderers messing things up. Plus, bookstores are necessary for civilization to flourish. Every new bit of knowledge or insight needs a stable way to be stored. Nothing is more secure than a book. You know, once a, once a book's out there, once it's dispersed among the public, it's you can't take it back. It's almost impossible to take it back. With a Worldwide internet access, yeah, you can get information out more quickly than you can with books, but information put out through the internet can also get shut down way more quickly, too, by governments or platforms or servers. You know, the, and that, that situation doesn't even need to be that diabolical in nature, either. If the, <laughs> if the electricity goes out long enough to run out of battery storage, you know, what are you going to do? You know, I had a, a friend, this is back in the 70s, he, yeah, reading's great when the power goes out, you know, so you need books. Now, if you uh, believe in conspiracies, and I'm not saying that I do, one major step to controlling people is to limit their book supply. You know, today's cancel culture can ban only a small percentage of the books, and that's only if normal people agree to it. You know, if the powers that be shut down the libraries and close the bookstores, they'll have succeeded at doing what the current control freaks have failed at. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It made sense in my head. I'm, I'm looking at that sentence. It doesn't make sense when I'm staring at the, the sentence. Maybe I think it sounded okay. Now, going one step even further, the powers that be could also shut down uh, internet service or limit it, and then the supply of knowledge is completely controlled by a tiny few. Now, you got conspiracy theorists out there concerned about a one-government world anyways, and I would say globalist government, but some of the theorists don't believe Earth's a globe, so we'll go, I'll, anyways, I'm not going to get into all that right now. <laughs> anyways, they're concerned about a one government world, you know, censoring everything, including the internet. And so if the bookstores get shut down, this globalist government, oh, I said globalist, oh, you know what I mean, that government will have complete control over the flow of information. 
Now, if you go even another step further, <laughs> okay, I don't think I'm going to go another step further. I think that's enough for now. So here's, here's just a simple reason why, why bookstores are an essential business. I need books, all right? That's why a bookstore should be considered an essential business, all right? So what do you think? Should bookstores be considered essential? And uh, God, what would you do? What would you do without bookstores and libraries? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And like I said, uh, check out my blog, dysfunctionalliteracy.com. All right, thank you. Kind of abrupt. I've heard worse. <laughs>